What it do, man? It's your boy Battle Truth coming to you live and direct from the Battle Truth headquarters, giving you another episode of pages, chapters of my life. Okay, man. So, when I caught my first case at the age of 17, and I went to um, prison when I was tried as an adult, I was locked up with one of the brothers within the team. His name was Smoke. Now, for people who don't understand, um, when my brother was the leader of the mob in Illinois, my brother was the leader of the mob in Illinois, Smoke was one of his right-hand men. Smoke was one of his right-hand men. Um, he actually was the third in command. It was my brother, then it was my other brother, then it was Smoke who was third. You know what I'm saying? We called him Smoke, man, because, well, they called him Smoke because I didn't know him. They was there before I got there. I came later on. Uh, but they was in another part of Illinois and came and got me from Chicago. I used to hear stories about him all the time, my brother and them, how big he was, how he had it, you know, all the things that were taking place and I just couldn't believe, leave it. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't believe it. And um, when my mama took ill and was in that coma for like seven years, my brothers and them um, came to visit her from out of Illinois to Chicago, came and visit her. And um, they seen her inside that hospital bed, man, and they didn't like the condition that she was in. And then they seen me as their little brother, seeing that I was just a little, you know, just a little hood, hood, running dirty little dude, man. Just, you know, ghetto as hell. And when they came in, man, they had on all these big mink coats with jewelry everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Diamonds and gold everywhere, man. They looked like real life superstars, you know. And then when they looked at me and seen my condition that I wasn't living well neither, it just like saddened my brother heart. And my brother was like, man, you coming with me, man. I'm finna take you away from him. So he took me from there and I went down there with him. Man, when we arrived down there, man, it was brothers everywhere. I'm talking about, man, it was everywhere. Like a family reunion was taking place. And I just thought, uh, it just seemed like it was a welcoming party for me, but it wasn't. This is how they be anyway out there. So I'm like, dang, this how y'all is out here? He like, yeah, this how it is, you know? So then he was telling me like, um, how he how he had it, and then I'm meeting everybody, and uh, people telling me like, man, y'all look just alike. The only difference is my brother was bigger. You know what I'm saying? He was older, so he was bigger. You know, so people were telling them um, how we looked alike and stuff like that. And um, in the process of this, I'm just meeting all these brothers and things like this. It's crazy, cause. The next day, the next day, when I was down there, the next day, I'm walking around with a few of the brothers. They showing me around. And out of nowhere, a big, like, fight break out. And they like, folks, folks, no fighting. Come on, let's go. Folks, no fighting. I don't know who folks them is. This is my first day here. My, well, basically, yeah, I hadn't been there 24 hours yet, so I can say that. But it was the next day, though. I don't know who folks them is, I'm, but I'm just running with the ones who I do know. And, man, I don't know who I'm fighting. I'm just fighting anybody who I don't know. So we just out there just fighting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, dang, this crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this my... First day here, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, all oh, this the real they were talking about with my brother and them. So, anyway, I ended up getting to meet some of the young brothers, man. 
because it was different branches of the uh, of the folks. It was the big folks and it was the little folks. The big folks consisted of brothers that was like, and they, and they like mid mid twenties on up to the little folks being like that and under, you know. But we was the wild ones. We was the ones that kept up all the drama. We was the ones that was always quick to want to pop off and do things because we were trying to earn names and reputation for ourselves. The older brothers was more laid back and tried to keep order amongst us from us not sending them off into wars and things like that. So... My brother was just giving me stuff all the time, you know. And I had got to the point where I didn't want him giving me stuff no more. I didn't want him giving me stuff no more. Because I hated asking him for stuff. Because sometimes he would hesitate when I asked him for stuff. And that just was a sign of me knowing that he really didn't want to give it to me. And he would just do it out of guilt because he had me down there. So some of the young brothers that was selling dope for him... Um, we got close together and we were friends real close. So they were telling me like, man, no, I was asking them like, man, I want to sell dope with y'all, man. I want to, I want to get in. They're like, no, nah, uh, your brother going to get us, man. He don't want you selling no dope. I'm like, man, he ain't got to know, man. I ain't going to keep asking him for stuff, man. I want to make my own stuff. So I got the, um, selling the dope with them, you know what I'm saying? So we selling dope together. And plus my grind was harder than all there because I wanted it. And I was saying to myself in my head, I only wanted to sell dope because I always wanted to be a superstar. So I was like, I'm gonna sell this dope, get some money, and I'm gonna buy all this studio equipment. And I'm thinking about my mama being in a coma back in Chicago. And I'm like, and while my mama in a coma, I'm finna get her, I'm thinking just like a, a little young dude who don't know no better. I said, I'm finna hustle, get this dope. I'm finna get my music career going on. And I'm finna give my mama the best nurses that uh, uh, she can, money can buy so she can get nursed back to health. And um, my brother got wind that I was selling dope. And he came and told me like, you selling dope? I was nervous. Because he told me not to do it. He didn't want to see me doing it. But people have been telling him I'm dedicated. I be working like straight. I work straight. And I bring back all good money. Nothing is missing. Nothing is shorted. So he looked at that as a means of like. I'm one that can be trusted. Plus we brothers. We real brothers. So. He didn't want to, but he knew he couldn't stop me. So he figured if he couldn't stop me, and even though he didn't want to, he might as well try to teach me on how to do it because I was one of them ones you would love to have on your team. I knew how to fight. I bust that trigger. Plus, I was a loyal dude when it came to faithfulness. So my brother admired that about me, man. So he allowed me to uh, sell the dope and just start running, running things from that point on. Everything was going through me as far as like uh, the product from the shorties on that end. And I was tipping hard. One day these dolphins came over with these guns, shotguns and rifles and stuff. And they had like a hundred shells to go with them. And they wanted like two bags of crack, I think for it. No more than two or three. So I bought the guns and I was happy, I was geeked. So I went down in the basement and I just got to shooting the basement up taking bottles and lining them up, just having target practice everywhere. I'm talking about, I'm shooting up the whole basement, just letting loose. 
I got a hundred shell of the waist. You know what I'm saying? And in my head, I was like, they ain't finna just be sitting up here looking pretty. So some of the brothers were coming by with time like, ooh, look what I just bought. Look what I just bought. Y'all wanna go in the basement and shoot? They're like, man, we're gonna get in trouble. I'm like, man, you know, I'm to me, I'm like, this my brother. I got a little leverage here. Just blame it on me, like. But they were used to seeing brother getting violated and stuff like that. I was new there. I ain't see all that type of stuff. So they was hesitant on certain things. I believed I had favor and leverage. So I used that to my advantage. So some of the brothers come down. Some of them get scared and they go tell my brother. Like, man, your brother just bought some guns and he down there shooting up the whole, shooting up your whole house. By the time my brother get there, we done already. And my brother like, uh, I heard you bought some guns. I'm like, yeah, I bought some guns. Then my brother like, where they at? I'm like, I got them put up. You like, let me see them. Go get them. Go get the gun. <laughs> my brother went down in that basement. He saw that whole damn basement shot. Up. <laughs> like, boy, boy, ooh, what the hell did you do? Wait, what, what the hell are you doing? Is you crazy? I'm like, I was just saying that they work before I bought them and stuff for them up. Took my guns from me, took my shells from me. <laughs> Took my guns from me, took my shell from me and everything. But before he did that, I forgot. Before he get he did that, one of the brothers named Dollar came to me. And he was like, hey, them ops throwing a the, uh they throwing a the party around the corner in our hood. I'm like, for real? He like, yeah, for real. I said, okay, what you trying to do? He like, man, they got to go. Let's get them up out of here, man. They got to go. <coughs> I said, okay. So I gave him, I gave him like the single shot shotgun. And I had the rifle with the clip in it. So I'm like, where they at? So we going around, traveling. So they on the porch. A lot of them on the porch. And we just in a ditch, like. So I'm like, that's them? He's like, yeah, that's them, that's them. I was like, since you got the one shot, you fire off the first shot. I'm gonna start letting loose with the other. He like, how he bet? He let off the first shot like, boom. While he let off the first shot, then I just get the dump and like, boom, 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 boom. Um, he let off again, boom. I let off. He get the taking off. I'm still letting off. He's like, come on, man, come on, come on. I'm like, no, I'm trying to feel the clip, you know. And we run to the house, take the units, and then the brothers throw them up in the, uh, throw them in the, throw them in the little spot thing, the little shack thing. And we just sat there like, we act like ain't nothing ever happened. We cut the music up real loud in the spot. We didn't want to hear nothing. We didn't want to hear no sirens, no amylams. We didn't want to hear nothing. Nobody knew what we did. We just was acting like nothing ever happened. We didn't have a care in the world. We didn't want to hear about nothing. We just didn't care. Just young and wild and reckless and dangerous and would do anything 
to prove a point only to only for nothing. Only for nothing. Nothing, you know. I know that I know that now, you know. Back then we didn't care. We just wanted to be accepted. We just wanted to get embraced. That's why it's so important for fathers to be in their children's lives, man. Because we was looking for that fulfillment. We wanted that that we need we wanted that love. We wanted that we wanted that love and we wanted that acceptance, man, that we didn't have. That's what we all had in common for the most part. We were just a bunch of wild gangbangers from young to old, fatherless, fatherless. Just being a nightmare to our own environment and community. It's real important for fathers to be in the home they children, being in their life, even if you get into it with the baby mama, y'all don't see eye to eye, and you move on, and she got a new man, I mean, just accept it, man, humble yourself, man, and do what's right for them children, you know, and women need to allow God, God the opportunity to do that type of stuff, to be in their kids life, even though they not together, but some of them be bad, uh, bitter, some of them be feel betrayed because of cheating and infidelity, and they don't they don't want to give in like that because it's too much of allowing that man to win, and the only leverage they got sometimes is to hold children against their father because they know some the fathers love them, and a lot of guys who in them streets don't like dealing with the court systems and going down to the courthouses and dealing with authorities and having them white folks in their business. So they just, they just accept it, you know? Pages, chapters of my life.